Robin, and I'm the Marketing Content Specialist for Omron Microscan. And I'm here with Felix Klebe, who is the product manager for all of our verification equipment. He also happens to be the in-house expert on all the FDA UDI regulations, which are coming up soon. So we're going to talk about some of the questions that manufacturers often ask us about the FDA UDI regulations. Thank you so much, Felix, for being sure, here. Sure, glad to be here. All right, first question, very basic one. What is UDI? Well, UDI stands for Unique Device Identification. It's a terminology that the FDA put in place as they put together the mandate, which talks about what UDI should be used for. And basically, it's a way of identifying a manufacturer and a specific medical device, which then can be tracked throughout the supply chain by encoding that unique alphanumeric number within a barcode and also often printing it in human readable text. Oh, okay. Um, so what part of the UDI regulations are taking effect this year, and why is it important for manufacturers to comply with them? Well, in 2018, what's being added is UDI initiative for reprocessable medical devices, so things such as a medical um, surgical clamp or scissors, mm -hmm. anywhere where you put a permanent mark, which we call a direct part mark, onto oh, okay. that device and use it for tracking and tracing throughout the life of that particular medical device. Mm -hmm. As far as the importance of UDI, UDI has been shown to be critical for tracking and tracing purposes of these medical devices. So if you can imagine that a device which has been sent out into uh, use has to be recalled, it's critical that we have a way of quickly identifying where all of these devices are and uh, looking in the database to identify who the manufacturer of that particular device could be. Okay, yeah, that is really important because patient safety is, of course, critical for all hospitals and other medical institutions. Um, yeah, so have there been other UDI-related deadlines? Is this the first one? No, the first uh, mandate was for 2015. It involved what we call Class three devices, which mm. are the most critical category for life-sustaining type equipment. So if you think of um, implants or pacemakers, things of oh, that okay. nature. So that was put into place in 2015. 2016 were the class two, so the next most severe category, mm -hmm. devices which um, were labeled but not those that are reprocessed. And then the class one deadline will be in year 2020. Okay, so even implants are getting UDIs put on them. That's fascinating. Yes. Okay. Um, what are direct part marks? You mentioned them just a little bit ago. And why do they need to be checked with a verifier? Sure. Uh, direct part marks basically mean that we are altering, physically altering the surface of a device. So it mm -hmm. could be plastic, could be a metallic substance. And we're essentially putting a small barcode, uh, most commonly a data matrix 2D type code, onto that device and after it is reprocessed, meaning sterilized, mm -hmm. that device still is sustaining its uh, readability. Uh, the reason we're concerned with verification is that after that device has, let's say, left the medical device manufacturer, it's at a hospital or perhaps somewhere else in the supply chain, it has to be able to be read by a big variety of barcode readers. Okay. And verification is all about ensuring that the quality of that mark is of a high enough level that it can be read by a variety of barcode readers, which would be used in, in hospitals or other locations. Okay, and it can even be read after the device is sterilized, for instance, which exactly. probably has I mean, a lot of harsh chemicals. And uh, uh, yeah, high temperatures, so okay. through autoclave, steam autoclave, or other methods of sterilization. Okay. Um, is there a specific method that manufacturers need to use to put these DPMs on products? I mean, to, so they can withstand such harsh temperatures and stuff? Sure. The, the FDA does not mandate which type of marking technology must be used. So it's really up to the medical device manufacturer to choose that type of marking technology that best fits their particular needs. The most common type of technology we would see would be laser etch marking. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the critical issues is um, some of these surfaces uh, that are available for placing the barcode are very, very small. So mm. um, we have cases where the size of the barcode is such that the minimal module within a two-dimensional barcode, which we call, um, let's say, the x-dimension of that module, mm -hmm. is as small as two thousandths of an inch, so very, very oh, small. Wow. So that we have to make tiny. sure that the first the marking equipment mm -hmm. can read that uh, or produce that small mark, and second, that the 
uh, verification equipment and the barcode readers are able to read such a small mark. Okay, so the X dimension, just to be clear, it's that like within the grid, it's the little individual boxes. Yes, the okay. square size of that small box within the 2D data matrix symbol. Okay, interesting. Um, but what happens like if there's a device that you really just can't put a DPM on it? Sure. Uh, well, the FDA does have a process for filing for an exemption for okay. complying with a um, class two um, reprocessable type instrument for those reasons we just talked about where perhaps they do not have a surface that is of adequate size mm -hmm. or perhaps if the marking is in some way going to compromise the performance or the integrity of that mm -hmm. medical device. So okay. there's a process where a manufacturer can go back to the FDA and apply for an exemption. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, so why is the quality of printed text on labels also important in addition to like verifying barcodes? Sure. Um, well, as you can imagine, most of these medical devices are labeled in some way, either if not just on the product itself, mm -hmm. also on its packaging. Oh, okay. So whenever there is a, uh, a UDI that is not, let's say, the direct part mark method, mm -hmm. the requirement is that the information is presented also in human readable. So okay. one of the important pieces is to make sure that the information that's within the barcode matches what is on the human readable portion of that label. So one of the things that Microscan offers is advanced inspection equipment mm -hmm. that will look at all the information on a label to make sure that it's accurate. So assuring mm -hmm. that it's accurate and that it's legible is an important quality process within medical device manufacturers as part, as part of their labeling operations. Okay. Now, this is a very important question. What can manufacturers do to comply with these regulations? Sure. Well, uh, there is a lot of information out there online, both mm -hmm. at the FDA website, as well as um, organizations such as GS1, who is a issuing agency for the UDI numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so those resources really give you a lot of background information about the regulations themselves, as well as some of their tips for compliance. And of course, there's a large number of consultants who've been focusing on helping medical device manufacturers comply with these regulations since okay. they've been rolling out over the last several years. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a few out there that can help a manufacturer get going if they haven't already. Okay, great. Um, is there enough time to implement the requirements before September? That's come up pretty fast. It is, a, it is a tight timeline since we're only six or seven months away. Um, certainly, I don't want to um, underestimate the amount of effort it, it is, and we've seen many manufacturers, larger manufacturers, who began this process a number of years ago, and uh, it took them perhaps a year or longer to get prepared. Um, oh, wow. So we are under a pretty, uh, we're under a tight deadline really from this point onward since we're mm -hmm. only seven months or so away from the uh, September deadline for the class two DPM type uh, requirements. Okay. So the last question um, is about the regulations that are coming up in Europe. Um, they're similar, they're not exactly the same though. Can you tell us more about like the MDR and IVDR regulations in Europe? Um, sure. The European Union uh, put into law uh, last May, they voted that there would be a um, regulations very similar to the FDA's regulations and they would take effect in May of 2020. Oh, okay. So we've got plenty of time in that case. Huh? Uh, there, there are some differences that are important to note. Um, first, while the U.S. FDA had a rollout schedule over multiple years based off of the class category of those devices, the European Union requirements are on a much more compressed timeline. So oh, okay. multiple classes really taking into uh, effect at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's also a key difference in that the European Union requires, in order to put the CE mark, which is typically required in, in mm -hmm. Europe, on these devices, there has to be a notified body who basically does the uh, testing and mm -hmm. audits of those manufacturers. And that process can, can take some time. So we would certainly encourage any manufacturers who are uh, planning to sell into Europe to begin that process as quickly as possible, given the potential for backlog within these notified bodies to do the required testing work. Okay. Well, great. That was it for my questions. And thanks so much, Felix, for answering them. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, once again, this is Felix Kleep. He's the Verification Product Manager.